Hey guys, it's Liam and Christina here. We're gonna give you a tour of our 80 series today. Yeah. Trusty old 80. Um, this thing's a 1994 HZJ80 and it's got 457,000 Ks on it. So we've been traveling Australia for the last two years in our 80. Um, we've got a pretty simple basic setup. It's like all we've needed to really get us through traveling two years of Australia. We've seen people do it with far less and a lot more, really. Yeah. But it really just depends, like, what you find comfortable and what your goals are for traveling. And Australia. what your budget is too. And yeah. what your budget is really. So we're pretty much just making this video to show you guys how little you actually need to travel Australia. Mm. We've been quite comfy in this for two years, and um, yeah, yeah. Uh, we actually we've been home for a while too, so there's actually not really any of our gear in there. It's just the bare setup, the bare fit out. So yeah, we run you guys through that. Liam yeah. built this all by himself before he left. Um, mm. So it's got a bit of wear and tear in it now too. Yeah. So mind that. Yeah. <laughs> All right, we'll it works. Get into it. <laughs> All right, so we'll just start at the front. We just got a aloe bull bar. Um, I'm pretty sure it's from East Coast bull bars. I just sprayed it black. It's pretty basic. Um, then we just got some spotties, and we've got a winch. It's actually got a steel winch cradle in there to hold that. Um, just some rod holders, and then um, a GME aerial for our UHF. So we've just got a safari snorkel. On the side here, and then underneath we've got a two-inch Dobinson's lift kit, um, and then we've got some 33-inch um, BF Goodridge KO2s, just all trains, and they've they've gone for about probably 65,000 k's I reckon, so can't really fault them. Uh, and then it's just some standard 16-inch steel rims. Um, over here we've just got some um, rock sliders. I think the by Bolsies in Queensland. So up top we've um, got the Darshi 270 Eclipse awning. That's handled some pretty strong wind, so I can't really complain. We've just got a standard camp light here, which has been pretty good. And then up the top, we've got a Motop 120 rooftop tent. Um, so it's been a little bit narrow for two people, but we've managed for two years, so it hasn't been terrible. Um, and then we actually upgraded the gas struts so it can handle more weight, because at the moment we've only got um, the four max tracks and the solar panel up there, which is an eBay special. I think it was like, I think it's like 250 watts, but it's, you know, it goes alright. Um, but usually we have a like a pretty big um, chaos cargo box up there, which has um, like fishing gear and random tools and things like that. And then um, we usually have about three surfboards up the top, which actually kind of help cantilever the weight a bit anyway. So, so yeah. All right. So at the back, we've just got the spare tire on a swingaway. Uh, I've made up a bracket which holds our gas bottle. And then um, just a standard bin bag. Up here we've got a reverse camera and just some reverse lights. So that's pretty bright, eh? Pretty beast. And one more thing around this side, we've got the kick-ass shower tent. Um, to be honest, um, some people might disagree, but we didn't really find it worth it. We did we probably used it only a handful of times in two years. We, um, it was pretty much just a shoe holder for our tent, really. <laughs> But um, yeah, we'd usually just go to public showers or we'd just have a shower in our swimmers and yeah, didn't use it too much. So this is a bit of damage from the telly track. Still haven't fixed it, but <laughs> might just leave it. it. Kind of adds to its charm, doesn't it? <laughs> so under the hood, we've got the old 18Z. It's a 4.2 litre, six cylinder NA diesel. Um, we get taken overtaken by every bloody road train, but um, look, it's so reliable, so can't really complain, eh? Um, over here we've got the pre-filter, um, I think that's Direction Plus, that's been good. Um, then we've got the diff breathers mounted over here, I think they're ARB. Um, over there we've got our first dual battery, that's a 90 amp um, AGM battery. And then in the back we've also got a 120 amp AG AGM battery, so 210 amps all up. Um, then we've just got a um, 25 amp DC-DC charger over there. And then we've also got in the back a 1000 watt inverter as well running off that. So um, I think that's about what, 105 usable amps, but um, it's more than enough to just run our fridge freezer and inverter and a few things like that. So yeah, all good. <laughs> all right, so in the cockpit here, we've got a five speed manual gearbox. Um, and then we've got a few other luxuries too. So first of all, these XR6 seats have been bloody amazing. Way better than the old bench seat we had in here. You can actually do a big day of driving and not have a sore back after it. Um, then in the middle, we've got the 11 litre Dometic uh, fridge freezer. This has been pretty handy for um, drinks and snacks and stuff. 
Um, then also up here we've got the reverse camera, which is really good. And then we've got this hat holder that I made up. Uh, this also holds our um, handheld UHFs too. Um, and then down here we've got the um, Bluetooth um, just radio kind of thing. And then we've got our UHF radio here. It's an Oricom. Um, over here we've got the Enerdrive inverter switch. So that allows us to turn it on and off and monitor it while we're driving. Because we've left it on way too many times before we had that. Um, so over here we've also got another really good bit of kit. This is the One Stone Armrest. Um, it's so much better than having your elbow on the bit of metal for eight hours. Um, and then we've also got some more cup holders, which this needs way more of. So, yeah, that's pretty much it for the front. Love it. So another pretty important thing I forgot to mention was we have access to our first aid kit under this seat. And then on the other side, we have access to our fire extinguisher. They're two pretty important things that everyone should have in their car when traveling in Australia. Alright, so now for the middle of the car. This is where we normally keep a lot of our general supplies, clothes and living stuff. So yeah, starting with electronics, we have a 1000 watt and a drive inverter down there and it connects to this 240 charging board which is super handy because we normally have our camera gear and laptops here so can easily plug those in. And then we have um, 12 volt charging ports coming out of here as well. Um, and then under this false floor we have an 85 litre water tank and we also have 45 litres in the back so all up we hold 130 litres and under here is all our plumbing so it's super easy to access if we're filling up and then it just leads out to this hose which is just like an on and off. Um, a lot of people install pumps but we found gravity fed has been great for us also doesn't waste much water but yeah um, we also have a fan that we run up north if it's too hot for the fridge um, just to keep that air flowing and then we've also found that we've split the sides of the car so when we first started traveling we just had everything a bit mixed but Liam having his own side and me having up my own side has just been so much easier because he has his clothes here his laundry here and I have my clothes on that side and my laundry down there we also keep our shoes on the floor as well so yeah and then up here this net has been just a game changer for organization we normally have our pillows that sit above it and super easy to access when we put the tent up from both sides and then inside the net we have our wetsuits um, spare towels spare linen and just yeah Everything's, as long as everything's super easy to access, you're winning really makes life so much easier. So we also have an inline water gauge over here that tells us how many litres we have left in our water tank, which is so handy to know, especially when you're in remote spots and you really gotta be water conservative. Um, and over here also, these are Liam's DIY solar screens. Um, just Kmart and um, a bit of those sticky things that you stick to the windows, which is, you know, it does the job. Um, and we also normally have like uh, those pocket bag things that you can like hook over the windows and they're so handy for like all our toiletries, easy to access bits and pieces. Alright so welcome to our kitchen slash shed. This is probably my favourite part of our setup and I think Liam's as well. Just has everything we need really. Um, so up top here we have a spares box that normally sits in the corner with all our spare parts. Uh, we normally have a solar blanket and just general camping supplies like our chairs and stuff like that And then we also have our 45 litre water tank that sits in the corner there um, And that just comes out to this hose and it makes it super easy when I need water for cooking or the dishes But yeah, we also have our second dual battery under here and our solar regulator and our fuse block and That also leads to our 12 volt charging here as well if we ever need power in the kitchen and then we can monitor our battery with the charge, the voltmeter there. But yeah, so yeah, do all our cooking here. Our dish rack sits under here. That's easy to get to. And then our gas line actually runs around the back here and sits on a gas bottle, which is in the bracket. So we never have to take our gas bottle off when we need to cook, which is like the best. Um, and then in this block here, we actually built it so that it can hold our table. Cause it often like when you have your table in the back here and you just put too much shit on it, it's hard to get out. So we, from experience, designed it so that that was easy to do for us. Um, at the back there, cause it's quite deep, Liam also keeps some tools. And then under that is our pantry. 
it's normally pretty full like it's a good amount of space and yeah fits all our food perfectly and might have tricked you there but they're actually king's drawers not yeti yeti don't do these i don't think um in here all our cooking supplies pots pans we also have a camp oven at the back there just everything we need really um and then on this slide out we have our 75 liter dual zone fridge freezer um by dometic and yeah great size we normally can fit about two weeks worth of food in there and this is probably my favorite part of our kitchen it's the cutlery drawer because you don't want to eat cutlery flying around but yeah that's probably a nice little touch there we added on the end which is great um and through the side here our ladder for the tent um we also have our water hose for our drinking water a little footstool because i can't reach the fridge sometimes depending on how we're parked um, and then up here we've got just general stuff, lighters, matches, our toothbrushes. We brush our teeth back here with the water, bin bags, and then all our utensils that are good. And then in this little hole here we normally have all our spices, which is so handy when I'm cooking. And yeah, the bloody turmeric exploded in there, so <laughs> don't look too close. But yeah, this is kind of our general setup. We also have a light for cooking. Yeah, orange light or white light keeps the bugs away. But yeah, it's our kitchen. Oh. It's frothy. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Mm. <laughs> Alright, so now we're going to go through a few questions that we often get asked about the 80. And I think one of our biggest questions is how much it costs and yeah, how much we spent before we started travelling. Yeah, so I bought the car uh, back in 2018, so about five years ago. Um, we picked it up for nine and a half grand. Yeah, it's pre pretty stock. Yeah, pre COVID, that's why. Yeah. We wouldn't find it for that cheap these days. Yeah, it could. But um, yeah, it was stock as off an old bloke. Um, he had only done a really bit of, like a little bit of towing with it, so um, mm. it was really pretty clean. Only had 330,000 on it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I reckon in the last five years. We've probably put about 15 grand worth of mods into it, roughly. We haven't really yeah. taken track of it, but... We, yeah, we never kept track of it, but... I but yeah, it be up, probably owes us about grand. 25 all up, I reckon. Yeah. But, um, but yeah. Um, another question we get asked a bit as well is, like, fuel consumption. How much, how much fuel do we use? Um, because the car's about three tonne and it's not aerodynamic at all. We usually have shit on the roof. Um, yeah, we usually get about 18 litres a hundred. Um, so it's not amazing, but it's also, it's all right. Like, cause when we started traveling, fuel was like a dollar 30. Yeah, it's so good. Yeah, and now it's we 2 30. Yeah. yeah. Um, another thing we get asked a bit as well is, what's in our spares box? Um, it's pretty much just um, a lot of genuine stuff like um, drive belts, fan belts, um, heater hose, radiator hose, um, a couple of bushes, a um, couple of light globes, headlights and stuff, mm. um, wiring and things like that. Um, just your standard standard tools and stuff, like a drill or grinder, um, socket set, that kind of thing. Oh, another thing as well, we just, I've just brought spare oils, like one litre bottles of oil for like diff oil, engine oil, um, transfer oil, things like that. Yeah, so originally we only planned to travel for nine months but yeah nine months ended up turning into 12 months and 12 months ended up turning into two years for us so mm. you know our main goal with traveling australia was to see all those little places and get to all those hard spots and be remote really and i guess that's why the 80 was such a good setup for us yeah i definitely recommend something like this yeah. if you're just going to do just a lap of australia like a yeah. year or two on the road kind of thing and that's beautiful like, yeah, this setup suited us so much because we yeah. weren't towing anything. And yeah. It was all really compact. It's allowed us to get to all those full drive yeah. accessible places like the Kimberley and Cape York and stuff like that. Yeah. And we've done it on quite a budget, so. Yeah. Some of our favourite spots were those hard to get to places. Yeah. And yeah, we feel comfortable and confident in the places that we have seen mm. in the full drive. But yeah, as it's becoming more of a lifestyle for us, we. Um, wanted something more comfy, so we bought a bus. Yeah, bought a bus. <laughs> yeah, and that's coming up in future episodes. Yeah, we're going to film our fit out process and put it on YouTube. Yeah, and, um, document yeah. the whole thing. and yeah. I guess we'll be able to tell you what's just, better. Just be two kooks building yeah. a bus, so 
stay tuned for that one. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, we just got it to a bit more comfort and now that we work and live on the road, it's just, um, mm. yeah. And that we're still keeping the 80 so we can do those four-wheel drive places yeah. that we haven't been to yet. I think the next trip up in the 80 might be something big, like... Big this. high country. Yeah, big high yeah. country. Maybe Simpson Desert. Yeah, Simpson Desert yeah. and I want to do Arnhem Land too. So. And Arnhem Land, yes. We're hoping, yeah, on our list. We're yeah. hoping to do those couple of trips in this in this 80 so that's still mm. sticking around I'm gonna leave it at mum's place yeah so <laughs> pretty lucky there but um but yeah gotta live enjoy bus life for a bit yeah and then yeah we'll see you in the next episode <laughs> cheers cheers thanks guys <laughs>